Hey, there's gonna be spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie, please watch it before you watch this, you idiot. In the year 2019, after scouring hundreds of websites for hundreds of hours, I finally came across a poster of Papa John and had it signed by the man himself. I sent this along with a job offer to become the director of marketing at his new pizza company, my friend Will, who was working in Ohio at the time. In 2021, also known as Just Last Week, he sent me a DVD oh. copy of... Okay. Okay. Bad idea. Mean Creek plus a handwritten screenplay of the oh, fucking mind, son of a bitch, Sam. Scene that we'd throw at each other in sophomore year. We're children and we'll forever be children. But I hadn't really thought about or seen the movie for a bit, so I popped it into my nearest outdated DVD player and. The movie does a lot of this. You know, having the scenes show you versus tell you what's going on. In the first 10 minutes, we see, okay. Sam is the victim, Josh Peck is the bully, Rocky's the big bro who wants to stand up for his little brother, Marty's the chill asshole in the small town which makes him the leader, of course. Clyde gets shit on a lot, and Millie is the naive, carefree philosopher. Do you believe in God? I don't know. It's straightforward, we need to get Josh Peck back, we need to- Hurt him without really hurting him. Because Sam doesn't want to be like him? Okay but it's deceptively straightforward. All we know about the actual plan is that they're inviting him on a boat trip, which Josh agrees to? We then go into his room to get his perspective where he's oddly excited to go so much that he wants to record it. Then we see blew his allowance on a present for a kid he just beat up a few days ago. Then he starts talking. I see stuff all backwards and shit. My doctor says it's a uh, genetic variation. But like if aliens came down and they had a uh, Oh, language. I'm a superior being. Future of the race. Oh, shit. It's interesting how we get Josh Peck's perspective right after a scene where we see a chill as hell and Marty almost snap on his brother. It begs the question, okay, who's the real threat here? But the group doesn't come around on him too quickly, even when he offers his help multiple times. It's understandable. Sam's cut is still fresh, and according to Clyde, who has been taking shit for him since third grade, the problem's been going on for years. Even Millie has her reservations about Josh, but she didn't even know about the plan until it's fully revealed to her and all of us for the first time. Planning on stripping him, throwing him in the river, and then we're gonna make him run home naked. Naturally, she doesn't want to be a part of it, and neither do we, so she makes him promise not to do anything. This sets in motion the gradual change in tone, best symbolized by... <laughs> he's in his own world. He's getting on TRL, he's shouting out his SoundCloud, he's doing his thing. Sam and Rocky are enjoying it too, to the point where it seems like they're having fun with him. This all falls against a backdrop of a beautiful ass day. We're bullshitting about cherry blossoms, we're eating PBJs and the music. But they still are a little apprehensive, even though almost everyone's agreed to call the plan off at this point. And Josh does their job for them by bringing up the question of why he's made their lives hell for years. When he's pressed on his own question by Sam, he clamps up. We've kind of gathered that he's not used to outside criticism, so it'd be natural for him not to admit his faults. It kind of personifies his character, described by the Josh Peck as being in survival mode. We see this constantly throughout the trip as his behavior bounces from nice to prick to I've totally smoked weed. <coughs> All this to impress our fellow cool, chill asshole, wow. Marty. Yeah, also there's one person who isn't sold on changing the plan. Why did you drop the anchor? At this point, nobody wants to do it, except Marty, and by default, Josh, who insists. This is where they were supposed to carry out the plan and get revenge, you know, daring Josh to do the thing. Instead, we get a glimpse of our happy ending. He makes everyone laugh at Marty's expense, and you can tell that even he's like, okay, you got me. This whole plan of revenge actually led to something positive. George is still odd, weird, and an asshole, but maybe he just needed a group of friends to reel him in. This is the moment where he finally has some, and it's he's having so much fun in this moment that- Enough is enough, is that what your dad says to you? <laughs> Josh saying that, Sam picking up the camera, 
Okay, maybe not that because apparently he fucked with the camera before like an idiot. I told you to never touch my camera! But whatever. Those actions seemed like innocent things from their perspective. It is pretty dumb on the surface for his whole tone to change in an instant, but we've established that he's not too right himself. And the gradual reveal that your new friends actually just strung you along on this trip just to punk you? It goes over well. Shut the fuck up, Clyde! Then we see our two unstables collide, and at this point, there's no going back. Don't only back at all. Kill this stop. kid stop. real quick. Nobody get off. It's not yeah. worth it, Marty. Come on. Just back off. Back away. The thing to say here would be, go save him. But after that, in that moment, I don't think anyone's thinking about the day they just had with him, especially after- oh! Besides, he's totally faking it anyway. <laughs> the three minutes of no dialogue or music after they realize that George is dead just lets it sink in for them and us. They weren't going to physically hurt him to begin with. Then they were going to potentially be friends, if not that, just understand what he's going through. And now... He's dead. Seeing them deliberate on what to do next and how it affects them each is genuinely sad, knowing they can bury the body because no one saw them, unlike these kids. But they have to live with it for the rest of their lives when their lives aren't even close to starting. That's heavy shit, which understandably changes them. Like Millie, who just earlier this morning was doodling some Aristotelian thought-provoking stuff to say to Sam on their date. She just killed a snail. That is honestly pretty dumb. I mean, this shot alone, I think, says it all, but I understand what they were going for. Sam doesn't trust his big brother anymore, and I, I see why. Clyde decides not to take any shit for once and stands up to Marty. The change feels genuine because in the vulnerable moment, they go with the easiest decision, which is burying the body, before gradually realizing, okay, my kid brain is going to explode someday if I don't share this with somebody. They decide to spill what happened to his mom on her doorstep. The kid who called him desperate earlier in the movie becomes... Yeah. And everything after that's kinda left up to the imagination, which I happen to like. Mean Creek wasn't really groundbreaking. It's a movie most of you, including me, have only heard of because of- <laughs> The whole youth dealing with grief and growing from it thing isn't a new concept either, and the influences are there. The kids decide to do the moral thing after their journey. Stand by me. We see the friend group fracture like River's Edge. Sleepers, like I mentioned, had the innocent prank gone wrong, except they did it in front of a New York block. Bully is a raw take that documents the abuse more and actually sees the ensemble descent into a murderous fascination until they're like, oh shit, this is illegal and my life is over. All these movies do certain things better and in some ways are better overall, but Mean Creek has a way of sticking with me as much as, if not more, than these similar films because it was never supposed to happen. It started out as a funny little prank to get revenge on a schoolyard bully, turned into a potential new friendship, and ended without George having a chance to make us fully understand. You fuckhead. That is the stupidest thing you interpreted there.